What does jacking off have to do with intelligence? What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Rune, and welcome to a new Fallout New Vegas mod series. Today, we're going to be starting Autumn Leaves, which was generously sent to me via Twitter by Austin. Thanks so much, Austin. Um, this is a very unique uh, mod, at least from what I was able to get from the Nexus page. Um, this is basically a DLC in its own. Um, according to what I can remember from the Nexus page, uh, it has a length of about seven to eight hours. Uh, it has its a unique um, soundtrack, and it has the voice work of, uh, I think his name was Johnny Utah from Newgrounds. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to get out of this mod, but I'm definitely excited. So... I guess we should just walk in and see what we get. Years before the nuclear catastrophe, a handful of wealthy men and women grew increasingly worried by the political unrest across their countries. Moral panic, witch hunts, and censorship spread like wildfire. This congregation, scientists, professors, artists, felt the need for a place where history and culture could be preserved, safe from those who would destroy it for its seditious content. They pooled their resources in the hopes of creating such a place, free from the volatile swing of political agenda. A vault was to be built. Within it would be enclosed the most comprehensive collection of books and holotapes in history. The project owed much to the efforts of one Professor Cartwright, who at one time worked for a certain Robert Edwin House at the Robco Company, and used his position to secure valuable contracts within vault -Tec. As the construction of this library began, the intellectuals gathered their private collections, hunted tirelessly for the rare texts to complete them. Cartwright would oversee this process and act as the library's caretaker. When it was time, all would gather for shelter, seal the doors behind them. None of them could predict, however, that the bombs would fall so early. And when they did, Cartwright was alone in the library. The professor knew that his days were numbered. To ensure that the library would not die with him, he spent his time reprogramming his robots. The machines would ensure that the library would persevere until the world could once again take advantage of its wisdom. He would endow them with the ability to think, the ability to choose, the ability to learn. Partly because he feared the dangers that might threaten the library in years to come. Partly because as the years grew long, he needed someone, something to soothe his solitude. Two hundred years have passed. Far enough time for something to go wrong. Today, the courier awakens the library from its long sleep. Okay, wow! That was an insanely professional um, cutscene we got right there. Um, so I did, <laughs> during the cutscene, I did look up, uh, some stuff about the mod on the Nexus page. Um, it is Johnny Utah. Uh, there are apparently eight unique endings. There are over 2,000, uh, unique pieces of dialogue. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about what this mod is. It actually has an original soundtrack by Pablo, uh, Coma. Which I'm excited to hear. Uh, if that was a song of his in the opening there, that's super cool. And I'm excited to hear the rest. Uh, there are eight new quests and several routes and resolutions. Which is super cool because that means we're going to have a lot of uh, decision making to do. So we start off with a bunch of maintenance robots like just piled up around. Uh, I'm assuming these are graves. Out there. What? A radio broadcast. So, there's still people out there fitted with a pit boy, huh? <laughs> uh, are you... Uh, well, I'm wounded and need healing. 
Do you have a doctor inside? Uh, let's see. So, um, we did get this quest through a radio signal that isn't actually in the game, but it just is like a way to uh, trigger the ability to do the quest. So, are you the one emitting the radio yes, signal? we are. You're coming from a vault, aren't you? Well, I don't see why we should have this conversation through an intercom. Please, come inside. I fear I must ask you to come in alone, though. We have a strict policy when it comes to our maximum number of guests. Man, what is with these mod creators and always, like, denying the entrance of companions? I'm glad I don't have any right now, but still. Like, if I want to bring my goddamn companions with me, I'm gonna. Just kidding, I don't really care. So let's just head in and see what's going on. Because I'm I'm interested in what's going on in this uh, thing. Because, uh, wasn't it, like, hasn't it been like 200 years? Isn't that what it said? Holy crap, look at all the books! Uh, this apparently is, uh, a vault that was built to preserve history. This is so cool. Despite your presence, the machine gets on with his work as you weren't, as if you weren't there. Examine. It looks like another Mr. Handy unit. He, he's particularly worn out, and some wires are hanging from his left side. That's really cool. Uh, can you help Please me with something? Along. If you have any questions, James on the first floor will be happy to answer. Voice acting is actually pretty high quality. Are you James? Yeah, of course he's a robot. Okay, let's do this right. Greetings, I am James. Rapco Protectron Unit 13882, and personal assistant for Professor Cartwright. How may I help you? Uh, of course, it's a robot. Um, who was this Professor Cartwright? Back when titles were still relevant, he was a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and chief science officer of Rapco. His domain of expertise, as you surely guessed, artificial intelligence. Uh, Robcom Company, Mr. House's robot company? Uh, did you and Master and Mr. House work together? Uh, how did he manage to build this place? A well-planned intersection of resources, contacts, and wealth. Of course, being in close relation with vault Brass also played in his success. I wonder how close this is to canon. Correct. I'm not surprised he still is alive today. When I'm asked uh, he's dead. about him, he was described as quite the resourceful individual. <laughs> yes, but I don't know the details. Our master wasn't very much inclined to talk about his former CEO for some reason. Uh, because Mr. House was a dick to everyone. Alright, well, are there any to Um... I don't... This isn't really true. Yeah, whatever. I don't care, Robbie. Uh, what I need is weapons, food, medicine. I'm looking for technical books, guns and bullets, Dean's electronics. What kind got... That kind got those. How many are you exactly? What? Machines, you mean. Quite a number, I must say. But I imagine you're asking how many of us are gifted with a personality module <laughs> a handful there's me Helena in the clinic upstairs Roland in the lounge and there's also Arthur in the computer room uh, seems you've been here a long time how, how, how can we last that Good long preparation I guess we have enough resources to sustain ourselves we produce our own energy recycle most of our scrap our mr. handy units go outside and scavenge when needed and keep both the facility and us Protectrons in top condition. Okay. Each of us has a specific responsibility. Helena has the final word when it comes to our guest's health. Roland takes care of logistics and Arthur is our database. Everything in between or about the library in general falls upon me. Okay. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear him properly. Uh, if you can't, I'm going to quickly uh, try to up the audio a little bit especially in the voices uh, just so in case the audio is crappy and you can't hear them now that you can all right yes um, 
I guess I'm off visiting this facility of yours. Wait, 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 wait. Now that the rules and regulations are taken care of, can I ask you a question? Maybe. I heard that the outside world is violent. Seeing you carry these weapons around, I assume you can take care of yourself out there. Oh goody, what am I killing? You already killed someone, didn't you? How did it feel? This is a... Um... <laughs> that was a really creepy question. Um... I can't say. I've never killed anyone. What kind of fucked up question is that? Do you want... Do you want to start something? Uh... I'm usually doing honest people a favor by cleaning up the trash, so I feel rather good about it. Stop assuming you know something about me. Carrying a weapon doesn't make me a killer. It's satisfying, just like whacking mole rats, two-legged cap... Caps uh, laid in pink little mole rats. Um... an abject experience no matter how you put it uh, what kind of fucked up question is that I kind of want to ask him that just because um, it was a really weird question um, I feel like that one's a little more true uh, because I don't with this character I usually don't kill people unless I absolutely have to um, so let's go with that one even though I don't like the the good about it part so you're that kind of person eh I hope the people outside won't miss you much while you stay here. Anyways, please, make yourself comfortable. Okay, let's go check out the facility. This is really cool. I like this so far. Uh, the voice acting is top-notch. Uh, if this is the music that is going to be playing throughout the entire thing, I like it. It's very casual. Oh my. Oh, this is the... Uh, corpse. Some books and gravity. Russell's. Check the body. By examining the skeleton's cranial structure and den uh, dentation, I don't. Uh, you realize the man was already very old at the time of his death. Probably suffered from osteoporosis. Even uh, something is wrong here. There is no way a man of such frail con constitution could have toppled such a heavy bookshelf. Oh, the robot's done murdered him. Act. Oh, hi, Arthur. I'm going to sit here and talk to you. How are you? The machine before you is silent. As if, you, as you sit down before it, you notice a little plate. I couldn't read the whole thing. Um, the machine before you remains silent. I need information. Anyway, I can... How is it you're not telling me anything? Long ago. Oh, fuck. A young man with an extensive spiritual life made a pact with a spirit. In exchange for his ability to speak, he learned an important fundamental secret about the purpose of man. Of course, the moment he learned this secret truth, his voice was silenced for the rest of his life. Obsessed by this knowledge, Frustrated by his inability to share it, he resigned himself to live the rest of his life in isolation. Years went by, and solitude grew heavier on the man's shoulders. He felt his sanity escaping his mind, like sand slipping through clenched fingers. So he decided to carve a piece of wood with the face of people he once knew, people he remembered, people he loved. He would converse with those in hopes of preserving some last shreds of sanity. He died eventually, leaving his collection of masks behind. Some say that deep within their frame still subsists a fragment of the hermit's wisdom. I'm... I'm not sure what that was. Uh, what kind of half-baked story is that? You could, uh, He could have written his goddamn secret for anyone to read. You speak, how do you... How do I make you do that? <laughs> um. A hermit once learned that by asking his questions to the mountains in the correct manner, the echoes would bring him answers. Uh, probably a matter of formulation. 
here. You only answer to open-ended questions, do you? <laughs> uh, what kind of half... Okay. Um, what's James' story? A testament. Story? An heir. Is sometimes all people need to leave this existence in peace. Um... I'll come back and talk to him in a little bit. Clinic. So let's see who's in here. Uh, uh, okay, so that is not part of this mod. That's uh, part of another mod that I installed. For some reason, uh, one of the f one of my followers freaks out. If you, uh, that's from the storyteller mod from the guys over at Shoddycast. Uh, I don't know why Edna keeps coming back to me. Look at the little dino toy. Oh, that's super cute. You must be Helena. Welcome. How may I help you? Uh, I have questions about your pre your previous guests. I will help you as much as I can, as long as you don't ask me to breach medical confidentiality. Even if they're dead? Of course. Uh, okay. So, I guess we couldn't ask that. This is a plastic dino in a cage on your desk. Something is obviously eluding me. Ah, it's a special something. I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, it's a symbol. Can you guess what it is supposed to represent? The caged beast, a reminder of the violent humans build up inside themselves. Dinos are extinct. The cage symbolizes the preservation of the past, just as this library. Uh, it's, I don't believe anything has sense. It's simply absurd. No meaning. You are the one who set up this little scene. You're the only one seeing meaning in this. I think it's this that one. That interpretation holds a lot of meaningful information. It's a very nice answer. I like it. But the fact that you chose this interpretation is what's important. And that's precisely what the dino is for me. A way of knowing our guests. So locking them away? I am a machine. I will never understand symbols or interpret their meanings on my own. But I know humans can. But surely you're not just here to talk about our plastic friend. How can I help you? Well, I tried asking you about your previous guests, but you obviously didn't Is want to answer this that. about us in general? Or about one of us specifically? Uh, let's talk about Arthur. Arthur is different. He is probably the one of us I can least relate to. He doesn't like to converse with us, and spends all his time compiling and organizing the data our master left him. If he's supposed to manage your databases, why did uh, why did your master bother giving him person personality? Why isn't he capable of giving straight answers? Did your master make it so? You're correct. Our master told us there was a reason why he programmed Arthur this way, uh... but never bothered to tell us. Um, is being a talking database all Arth all Yes. His memory is. should contain every book in the library by now. If anything should happen to them, Arthur would be able to print replacements. He That's is right. also in charge of monitoring our maintenance bots and dealing with the vault's technical functions. That's cool. Uh, is there any way to make him answer my yes, questions? Yes, there is a simple trick. He only answers open-ended questions. That's stupid! So he's useless! Kind of. Let's put our through side. Yes. Um, so we have James. Uh, let's talk oh, about James. James. Isn't he a sweet fellow? He's kind of creepy. Um, he couldn't resist, could he? I told him this would make our guests uneasy. Shortly put. He is programmed to ask all kinds of questions, to be curious oh. of the outside world and people. Because of this, he's programmed to be a child. He would be the first to talk to new guests. Because children are always he's curious. He's managing this vault's relation with the outside. Uh, he's very diligent when it comes to library safety. If he some is he comes some kind of leader for you all. Uh, if he's so curious to the world outside, people and world, why doesn't he go out himself? Because he'll die. Uh, does he have some kind of curious and morbid curiosity about death and murder? We are all programmed to try and understand what we can't grasp. 
For us, intuitive concepts like dreams, sensations or feelings are elusive. There's a chasm between humans and us. And despite the odds, we have to work every day to find a way to cross it. That's how we are made. We are constantly chasing concepts that escape us. Hmm. Um. We can't go out. That would leave this place unattended. And we all have a role to fulfill. Besides... D does Helena really have a place here anymore? Because she... Like, she was here to... Like, she is working in the clinic where yes. people are supposed to go to get medical attention. Um, and there is no one here that would require medical attention. Oh, I assure you there is nothing much to know about me. I examine, I treat, I stitch. When I'm not, I try to develop my psychoanalytical skills, which is quite difficult. Uh... Do you yeah. wish to talk about something else? Well, that seemed to... Um... Yes? Anytime. Well, we've talked to all three of them so far. Helena was probably, surprisingly, the most useless. Edna, go away! You're breaking the immersion. Alright, let's talk to James again, because obviously we missed something. Oh, uh... Adio, James. So, how may I help you? Well... Yes, he hasn't been answering for a century now. I may be overextending my judgment on this, but I think he's dead. <laughs> he can't check. Uh, his faithful love for books put aside. What can you tell me about him? You made a grave for some robots outside, but you did not bury your own master? A grave for robots outside? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. We can't go out. The maintenance bot is able to. But only rarely, and only to conduct checks and repairs on the exterior. Uh, so you just left your dead master there? Why not? He liked it there. That's so... <laughs> oh. Um. All that we know is that one day we found him in this position, under a pile of books. He hasn't moved ever since. Because he died. As for now, we theorize that he tripped and tried to catch something to stop his fall. The bookshelf came down with him. That would take a lot of force, even if he tripped and pulled it down. Um. Back when titles were still relevant, he was a professor at the Massachusetts. His domain of expertise. I already t asked about that yes. earlier. Uh. Right. Well, I, uh, you, uh, sh should ask Roland for any kind of misplaced books, I fear. He usually loiters around in the lounge on the second floor. About your late yes. master. Did we get everything about him? Okay, yeah, we did. Um, I'll go see now. You. So, let's go see this other robot that I missed. <gasps> oh, we found it. Oh, Roland. Oh, terrific! Daddy Spoy let another bum in the door! Well, welcome to Library Day Roland. Don't steal any of my shit, okay? Looks like you can't read anyway, so I probably don't have much to worry about. I think this is- oh, I hit the mic. I think this is Johnny Utah. I think. I don't actually remember what he sounds like. Um... Huh? Oh, well. When did you take an interest in the interpersonal politics of a bunch of soulless machines, huh? <laughs> uh, why are you so obnoxious? Well, it's not my fault. I had abusive parents and they, uh, used to hit me. This is Johnny Utah. Prim who now? <laughs> There's a robot outside which looks just like you, a wreck with a cap. Cowboy oh, we all look the same to you. Is that it, you racist motherfucker? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> this well, is good. We look more different than Asians, at least. Uh-oh. I didn't say that. Wow. Wow. 
Uh, tell me, is there a reason why you're the only one with a unique flare? Look, you just mind your own goddamn business and go back to inhaling all the oxygen and jerking off to whatever you filthy animals do, okay? Uh, James told me you were where to the go-to guy if I wanted some special books. <laughs> oh, right. That's me, all right. The go-to guy for the special books right here. Good old Roland. So where can I find issues of guns, bullets, or... Oh, I don't know. It's a goddamn library. You want you look around, asshole. Isn't hiding books against the whole purpose of this library? You know, believe it or not, I used to actually care about this place. Oh, yeah. It was my sole purpose in this existence, after all. So, when I see a bunch of reckless Neanderthals utilizing these books for the most distasteful of purposes, as well as wearing them out before any future generations can enjoy them... I decided it was best to put him away for safekeeping. Sue me. Um. I can see your pupils dilating, you filthy liar. Oh yeah, we've got seven full books on polygraph machines alone. I may not be able to jack off, but I am smarter than you. Wh oh yeah. What does jacking off have to do with intelligence? No, uh, I'm reformed. I used to be like that before I took a bullet to the head. Oh, it's not my fault. I took a bullet to the head. Wah, boo-hoo. I swear, if I had a nickel for every damn drifter and vagabond that used that excuse on me. He'd have a nickel? Well, goddamn, I just got served. I can hear the two remaining neurons in your head bouncing off each other to come up with that line. <laughs> uh, if I was really here to ransack the place, what would it be to you? Well, <laughs> my cohorts in here might go, beep boop, put that back, silly human. But, you know, if you want to cross an unhappy metal automaton with metal claws and lasers built into his face, well, you be my guest. Uh, no, seriously, I'm here out of sheer curiosity. I'm not interested oh, I in I can it. see your little gelatinous eyeballs darting around the room. I see you looking at all my stuff. That plant, mine. That painting, mine. That jukebox, wanna guess? Yours or mine? Er, uh, time up! It's mine! Okay, uh... uh... Did you know that if you don't eat, I accidentally... your body begins to consume its own muscle and tissue after a week or two? You'd probably eat your own shit after that point. <laughs> Pretty interesting read. I accidentally skipped a line, so I don't know the context of that. Come back. Well, so far we have absolutely no idea what we're doing. This is great. So, we found the bathroom. Alright guys, I think I'm going to end it here. Um, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps me out. Uh, leave a comment down below if you want to see more of this, even though I'm going to do it no matter what. Um... My name's Rune, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Autumn Leaves. See ya.